Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an octic polynomial equation. So we do have x minus 1 to the 8th power plus the quantity 3x minus x squared plus 1 to the 4th power is equal to x plus 2 quantity to the 4th power. So there is no formula, obviously, for octic, not even for quintic and above, right? So, but this is a special type of equation and we're going to manipulate this in a special way. Okay, obviously, I'm just saying this because it's not possible to solve all octic equations. All right, so at least exactly, right? So what am I going to do? Well, notice that I do have the fourth power twice, and then I have an eighth power. So what I'd like to do is I, I want to make everything kind of even. So why don't we just go ahead and turn this into a fourth power expression? Let's go ahead and do that. How do I turn this into a fourth power? Well, I can just write the x minus 1 to the eighth power as x minus 1 squared to the fourth power because 2 times 4 equals 8 and then just the rest is going to stay the same let's see what happens from here now since x minus 1 quantity squared can be written as x squared minus 2x plus 1 let's go ahead and do that x squared minus 2x plus 1 to the fourth power plus 3x minus x squared plus 1 to the fourth power and that is equal to x plus 2 to the fourth power now, this is where the magic begins, maybe math and magic. Okay, we do have like the, the sum of two fourth powers being equal to another fourth power. But not only that, notice that we got something special from here. Why? Because if you go ahead and add these equations up, and why am I adding? You might be asking, now, why would we add? Why not, right? Why not add these two expressions? Because when you add them, you're going to notice something interesting. You get x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 3x minus x squared plus 1. I guess the motivation here is x squared is going to cancel out first, right? But not only that, it's going to be even better than that because we get x plus 2, which is this expression right here. So what's that supposed to mean? Well, this calls for substitution, obviously, right? So if I call this a, so what am I talking about? Let's clarify that. So if I say, okay, x squared minus 2x plus 1, let that equal a, and then let 3x minus x squared plus 1 equal b. And then when I add these two quantities, I got x plus 2. So x plus 2 is going to be a plus b, as you can see here, right? Okay. Now, what am I going to do with this? Well, I'm going to substitute, obviously. So I'm going to be getting a nicer expression, much nicer. So it's going to look like the following. It's going to be a to the fourth power plus b to the fourth power is equal to a plus b to the fourth power. And this is significant because it really simplifies the whole process. Okay, now how do I proceed? Well, we're going to be using the binomial theorem or the Pascal strangle, whatever you call that, to expand the right hand side. So let's go ahead and do that. If you expand the right hand side, and I would like to write it if you don't mind, I'd like to write that first because it's better if I have more terms on the left-hand side. It just works better. So let me go ahead and expand this and put that on the left-hand side. So it's going to look like the following. a to the fourth power plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the fourth power. And if you're asking where this comes from, I'd like, you, I'd like to refer you to Pascal's triangle or the binomial coefficient. So these are like 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, so on and so forth. Now, notice that here a lot of things cancel out. For example, a to the fourth, not a lot, but a couple, you know, but it's good enough. So a to the fourth plus b to the fourth is going to cancel out, leaving us with zero on the right-hand side, which is really nice. And then now we can work it out by factoring this expression because it has a common factor, which happens to be 2a squared b squared, right? Okay, cool. So I can write it as, well, actually not 2a squared b squared, what am I talking about? It's 2ab. So when I take out the 2ab, which is the common factor, I end up with 2a squared plus 3ab plus 2b squared. I can't make the joke to be or not to be, right? Because it's 2b squared. All right. Now, this is equal to 0. And this is good because we have 0 on the right-hand side. And our expression, is, our expression is much, much simpler. Because what I have is you know, a quadratic multiplied by another quadratic, which is very easy to solve. Okay, thanks to the substitution. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I'll be 
basically setting everything equal to zero, right? So we get this equal to zero or this expression equal to zero. I'm gonna deal with them separately because the first case is kind of easy. So let's go ahead and do that first. So if AB is equal to zero, this implies what? This implies A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. And B or means either one of them is zero or both of them is zero. Both of them are zero, right? Is that the right word? Whatever. Okay, so if A is equal to zero, what is that supposed to mean? Now let's go back here and remember what A equals. So A is equal to X squared minus two X plus one. So if X squared minus two X plus one is equal to zero, in other words, x minus one quantity squared is equal to zero. This just means that x is equal to one. Great, so x equals one is a solution and this is valid because we didn't really square both sides. So we did not introduce any extraneous solutions. Great, so x equals one is a valid solution. What about b equals zero? Well, b is the other term which is three x minus thing. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have three x minus x squared. I think that's a plus one, right? plus one is equal to zero. Great, I'd like to negate both sides because uh, I wanna keep my x squared you know, positive. So this equation is gonna look like x squared minus three x minus one is equal to zero. Obviously this is a quadratic equation and it has two real solutions. Why? Because c is negative, a is positive. So in this case, we always have real solutions. Okay, how am I gonna write them? Well, using the quadratic formula, negative b is three, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is, happens to be discriminant. Discriminant in this case is, you know, b squared, which is nine, and then plus, right, plus, or it should be a minus sign, right? Okay, let's see. b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so that's gonna be b squared nine minus four times one times negative one, but the negative is gonna make this a positive. So therefore, our discriminant is just gonna be 13, which also shows that there are two real solutions, and we're gonna divide it by two a, which happens to be two. So we do get three solutions from here. Now, are they all good? Yes, definitely. They're all real solutions, and uh, you don't need to check that because checking probably would take forever, but if you want, definitely you can do that. Be my guest. What about the second part? Well, we do have another equation that we have to deal with, so let's go ahead and deal with that part. And that equation happens to be two a squared plus 3ab plus 2b squared. Now, I'm not going to replace a or b with something here because that would complicate things. Let's go ahead and try to solve this equation as is. How do you solve this equation? There are two variables, but remember that this is homogeneous. So what I can do is I can replace a with something. For example, I can say something like a equals kb, right? And that's, that should work. Let's see what happens. When I replace a with kb, so it's gonna look like two times k squared b squared plus three times kb times b, which is kb squared plus two b squared. Now, the reason why this works is because if you look at each term here, this is quadratic, this is quadratic, and this is quadratic, that's why it works, okay? And what I can do here is I can take out the b squared and I should be getting a quadratic equation in k, which happens to be a over b, if b is different from zero. Of course, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. So I get this quadratic from here, which is pretty interesting, I think. And what this means is that I can solve for k and then hopefully uh, from there I can find the values of a or b, whatever, and then hopefully go to see x from there. So a lot of substitutions obviously, but this is basically one of the methods. Now, how do I proceed with the solution? First of all, notice that uh, b does not equal zero because if b is equal to zero, we already talked about it, right? So we don't really need to repeat that. We've taken care of that part. So let's just assume that b does not equal zero which implies that this quadratic here equals zero. And if that quadratic is equal to zero, like I said, this is a quadratic and I can solve this equation with the quadratic formula. Let's see what happens. If you use the quadratic formula to find the values of k here, you're gonna be getting something like negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is nine minus four times two times two, which happens to be 16. But what are you getting from here? Wow, nine minus 16 is negative seven. So we're not getting real solutions from here. Okay, so k is gonna give you something like this, negative three plus minus root seven i over four. And I know some people are gonna be upset, but sorry about that, we're going for real solutions. Well, if you wanna, if you wanna go for, with the complex solutions here, obviously you can proceed. That's just gonna be a little time consuming, but at least you got the idea. So a equals kb. So what you can do is you can replace a with k times b in 
the original equation and you should hopefully be getting a solution from there. So you can proceed with that. But this shows that we don't get any real solutions in terms of x. Okay? So what this means is that we are at the end of this video. So this brings us basically to the end of this video. And these are going to be the solutions for x, the real solutions for x. And you might be asking like, why does it have three real solutions? Are the rest complex? Do we have five complex solutions? No, actually, we have four real solutions, but x equals one is repeated because that's a perfect square. Therefore, we have four real solutions, two of which are equal. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.